Welcome to the Potter Discussion. Welcome back to the Potter Discussion. This is episode 116, and on today's episode, we will be discussing the topic of whether Neville is a useful character in the Harry Potter story. Let's do this. Hello! Welcome back. Thanks for checking in again. It feels like forever since I last recorded because so much has happened in last week. Not really, but it feels like a lot has happened. We're really getting into winter here, at least in the northern hemisphere. Um, a lot of snow is falling around where I live and shoveling was the main activity last weekend. But this weekend, not a lot of new snow. A lot of the roads are clear. The plows are going, so there's not much to do on my end. But still... Now my morning walks are quite cold and crisp, so it certainly wakes me up. Um, I, I record, so my, my morning schedule is I wake up, I take a walk, I have breakfast, and I record, at least on Saturdays when I do record. And um, <laughs> today, it was so, so cold. There was something about it. I mean, I don't know if it was the wind or there was just something in the air that was just cold, something, whatever. Um, but it just, for some reason, was so cold and my cheeks were like just freezing but i i made it back to my house and i had some 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 delicious eggs for breakfast and now i am here recording and i'm very excited because we are talking about neville neville of course everyone loves neville he is he's great he is occasionally the comedic relief but finds himself in the end and today we are going to be talking about if he actually plays a role in the story and if he actually matters i know a lot of people are gonna be mad at me for this one but i will explain so we should probably just get into it right after i remind you that the duel links in the show notes below are still available the speak by page link and the google form link for anything you want to hear or say on the show you can also send me an email my email is the potter discussion at gmail.com that is the potter discussion at gmail.com and let's get into this episode okay so i want to give a little backstory on where this episode came from so this is not an episode that i would usually do but i was talking with a friend of mine and of course um i hadn't talked to him in a while uh because of all the whole COVID situation but finally finally did and i realized that he's a huge harry potter fan and i was so happy to hear that um because i honestly i I don't i don't know a lot of harry potter fans i wish i knew more so i could talk with them about this stuff but uh he's a huge harry potter fan i was talking with him about um some favorite characters and all that kind of stuff and the topic just came up about neville and he said you know yeah i mean like i never found neville to be a really useful character and i i just like i was just like what what wait whoa 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 whoa, whoa. hold up so uh, he explained to me why he thought neville did not play a role in the story and on the face of it it seems like that's true i mean like you know, he's, he's not really, you know, uh, he, he didn't do anything big. And then you think about it a little more and you realize, oh, he did do a lot of things. First of all, I mean, like, first and foremost, he killed Nagini, which I think is the big one. He set up to Harry in the first book. And then you kind of go deeper and think, well, Harry could have done that. And then you go even deeper and you think, well, maybe Neville was the only person who could do that. So I was just so confused. And I thought, what's the best way to figure this out, this, this mystery out? Oh, yeah, let's just do an episode on it. So that is really where this, where this idea comes from. And, uh, yeah, I think we should we should i'm really really looking forward to this because i am looking forward to puzzling this out in my own head i i personally have my own opinion that i will be sharing with you but i like when i go over all all the talking points in this whole discussion i want to make sure you know what you think so when i review my answer you're not biased so let's get into this with an intro to neville so neville of course we all know him he is the big teddy bear of the harry potter series he is nice and he is somewhat oblivious to just about everything through the first couple books he really didn't know who he was he was really trying to almost make a name for himself in gryffindor and just come across as not the kind of person that he came across as as a kind of person who wasn't really smartest perhaps and people just kind of took him as not a um a valued member of gryffindor i think the the, the slytherins 
or the people who really took that home. But Neville just had no self-confidence. And it was just dragged down all the more because he wasn't even considered a wizard until he was dragged out a window when someone was dangling, when, when, when his, um, I think, uncle was, was dangling Neville out of a window then was offered a some kind of treat and then dropped Neville. <laughs> he dropped Neville and then Neville bounced. So that, that story was, I mean, like kind of sad to hear that that's how they found out Neville was a wizard but that only made Neville go into his wizarding career thinking like oh like man like am I really that is that me so he does not have he he wasn't really in a healthy place when he entered Hogwarts and that's only made worse when Draco Malfoy and all, all the Slytherins just saw him saw what what his abilities were and really just kind of noticed who he was and how clumsy he was. So they really took that and ran with it, and Neville just could not stop them. And honestly, if Neville just had a different outlook, and if he just didn't listen to what Malfoy said, I'm sure he could have actually made it better, because we all know, like, if you're nervous, you always perform a little bit worse, you always make the mistakes, you focus too much on something you're trying to be doing. So, because Neville was taunted so much, he was focusing way too much, and he was trying way too hard, which just resulted in him failing even more often. But, that only increases his position of, I don't know what you would call it, of, of silliness with the Slytherins, and that it just keeps building and building and building, and finally, I think the book that where he really changes is in the fifth book. He joins the DA, he finally finds out that he can actually do stuff. He can actually cast some spells, and I mean, you can see it. The moment he, he disarms that Death Eater demo for the first time, it's like, whoa. I think in the books it was Harry, and Harry wasn't looking, and it was a whole, you know, thing, but you could tell Neville was like, yes, yes, and you could, I mean, in that moment, you could really look back and see that Neville could do that the whole time. It was just, Harry was like, oh, he's, he's of course, a really talented wizard, and Neville versus Harry made it pretty obvious, but... Because Harry just wasn't focusing in that exact moment. Neville cast a spell and his spells worked. It was just Harry's spells worked better. But Neville cast a spell and it disarmed Harry. And then from that moment on, he was like, yes, I am a master of magic. Bow down to me, all of you fools who cannot cast a, <laughs> yet a single spell. Um, well, maybe not quite that much, but he was psyched that he could cast that spell. And then it re you could really tell it snowballed from there. And, well, not, it, I should say, it reverse snowballed. He had kind of piled on all these, all this doubt and all this, you know, kind of like hatred and laughter from all the Slytherins. And he just kind of pounded that away and shook all the snow off. And really, it revealed the person who he was and finally realized who he was. And actually, kind of a mini Easter egg slash theory is he got a different wand in the... I, I can't remember what book it was, but maybe like sixth or seventh book, he got a new wand, and that's really when his magic took off. And that was because he really just his his wand was his dad's. And that is of course the like the, not the kind of formula you want because the wand chooses the wizard, and Neville's dad's wand chose his dad. And then Neville just took his wand, assuming that it would choose him. Of course, maybe it didn't, and that's why his magic was so poor. And then finally he got a different wand and he could do magic just fine. So I think he really became his own person after he got the confidence to just kind of come out and say so, that he was not his dad, that he was not someone else, and of course he was, he would be proud to be, and he said he was proud to be their son, but he still wasn't himself. He didn't have anything that was for him, he just kind of had his dad's wand and a reputation of awesome, you know, you're, you're, of course, if you're a long bottom, then you must be great. Um, and then, of course, he wasn't, so he had to build his confidence, he had to really just kind of come out as, I am, you know, I'm Neville, I'm not my dad, I'm not my mom, I'm Neville, and that is really where his character comes from, I think that's, that's the kind of character we are going to be going off of for today's discussion. Okay, so now without actually answering the question, we're going to talk about what role Neville actually plays in the story. So I think we can talk about this without actually talking about if he has any use, because every character has some kind of role in the story. I don't, I don't know what that may be, but there is a use for for someone everywhere in the story. So this is, this is really the time we're going to be talking about that. Really where Neville fits in, what he does, what role he plays, and kind of who, who he impacts along the way. And this question does not have an answer. Not one answer. Neville's role changes drastically throughout the books. I think if you think of, you know, the person who forgot his robes and he, he had a remember-all and it turned red and, you know, then to the 
to the person who killed Nagini, the final Horcrux of Voldemort in the seventh book. That is just a huge jump, and those two roles are very different. I mean, extremely different. So in the first and like maybe second, third books, he was really providing as just kind of the clown. You know, like I said before, he was kind of the comic relief. I think Ron was more of the comic re relief, but he, Neville was more of the clown, you know? He just kind of fall, like falling over, forgetting things, casting spells, you know, exploding, not really understanding things. Um, and of course, every clown has his best moments, and that's when he, you know, kind of like stood up to Harry. And that's really when he got, you know, a glimmer of hope. And yes, he continued to be this kind of silly, clumsy person he was, but it was maybe the fourth or fifth when his role changed. And I think it changed into more of a, a sidekick kind of thing. So in the the fourth and fifth book, we did, we, we seen Neville kind of with Harry and helping him. Helping Harry with the gillyweed, helping Harry with the books, helping Harry with the DA, going to the DA, you know, enjoying it, hoping that it continues. So we see kind of Neville growing from just, you know, this this little clown to someone who has a who has a role, someone who has a part in the story, someone who actually has an impact on what happens. And from there, we see him move on to more of a a powerful place. So from the fourth and fifth, he'd be going to the sixth and seventh stages of of Neville's role evolvement, I guess you'd call it. And from there from, from the fourth and fifth book from Psychic, he branches off from Harry, and he creates uh, his, his own kind of, his, his own faction. Um, so there's, it's, it's funny actually, there are a lot of different trios in this book. Of course, there's, there's the golden trio, the trio, the trio, whatever you want to call them, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and then what I would call kind of the um, silver trio, which is, I think is, uh, you know, the name for them, Dumbledore, McGonagall, and Snape. And then there's the bronze trio, the trio that is still a huge part of the story that kind of grows into their own roles, respectively. And the bronze trio, I think, is Neville, Luna, and Ginny, which in this case, I think makes sense. Um, they are the people that we see kind of working the background in Hogwarts while Dumbledore, Snape, and McGonagall are doing their own things, Dumbledore not really, but Dumbledore and Snape kind of working together in the seventh book uh, with Dumbledore's portrait, and McGonagall trying to keep things together in Hogwarts, and um, uh, Neville, Ginny, and Luna are holding down the student fort at Hogwarts, keeping the, the DA alive, the room of requirement is growing constantly, there's always someone in there just so they, uh, it's kind of their, their safe space where no one else can get in, because of course if there's someone in there, the room of requirement cannot be used for another their purpose so they keep two or three people in there at all times uh, and of course it the the DA grows a ton and it becomes more of a resistance than a you know learn how to duel club the dueling club <laughs> but even the, even even so Neville is really seen as the leader of that almost at least that's kind of how I see it but we also see Luna there and Luna and Neville are really the people who want the DA to continue the most um, and that we, we can see that in in the sixth book, uh, of course, because I, I mean, if, if you haven't heard, I have read, I just read the sixth book. Um, <laughs> uh, so they, Neville and Luna, are really the two people who want to see the DA continue. And they're the ones who are asking Harry about it. And they, they want the DA to continue, even though it probably won't. And they realize that Harry cannot continue it. But the next, in the next book, the next year, they create it more as a resistance, as a place to go after Dumbledore. Um, because Dumbledore was not there to, to instate and enforce the laws that he had in place previously that allowed for them to do the things that it did, and they didn't have Dumbledore's protection, so Snape could come down on them as hard as he wanted to. Of course, he wouldn't do it too much just because he, he was on their side, but if he caught them doing something they shouldn't, he would not, you know, be, okay, you know, 10 points from, from Gryffindor, go away back to your, back to your common rooms, but he would, he would work up a fuss, and they, they had to make sure that they would be, be away from that and kind of steer clear 
from the destruction that being caught would cause them, which is why they would keep, you know, two to three people actually in the DA, in the room of requirement at all times, just to make sure, you know, for 100% certain that no one could possibly get in, which is smart. Um, they could just, they, they could honestly live in there. Of course, the room of requirement is kind of, it, uh, it expands for, for needs, for the people's needs. Um, and I think in the book, it was described as like, it, it kind of like grew to have like a, like a bathroom and a kitchen. There are hammocks hanging from the ceiling and, you know, they had a, a secret way out of Hogwarts. So really, a it was a big deal that um, the room of requirement was still in use and that they could still kind of move move with it. And Neville spearheaded that whole operation. He he was the forefront, and that's where his role became his strongest. He fi- he could finally see himself as as the person that he was. He was leading the DA. He was heading the resistance of Hogwarts, and he was holding out the fort for Harry. But then Harry arrived. And he, she was like, okay, great, you know, what are we doing? Harry says, we're looking for something, and then, I mean, that that hilarious thing with uh, Seamus Finnegan where Harry says, great, we need to find something, and then Neville said, what is it? And then Harry says, I don't know, and then Neville says, where is it? And then Harry says, I don't know that either, and then, <laughs> and then Harry says, I realize it's not much to go on. And then Shaman says, wait, that's nothing to go on. <laughs> that cracks me up every time. Um, but the, the point of this whole thing is Neville is finally seeing himself as someone who can lead the day and someone who, who really can step into a role of power and kind of take take in who he was and who he is at basically that point. So that's where his role was the strongest. That's where he really became a leader of his own operation. And Harry came to the DA and then Neville realized, great, Harry can do this. He can take over. But then he didn't. Harry didn't. Harry just kind of left. He, he looked for the Horcrux. He kind of left. And it was Neville. It was Neville who led it. And then Neville realized he didn't need Harry. He did not need Harry to lead the DA. And that was the moment that he said, I am Neville. I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, and he did, like, the train who could, I think it was, you know, I think I can, I think I can. So, that is the evolutionary tale of Neville Longbottom. I hope you enjoyed that, it was like 10 minutes, but now we can get into the juicy stuff of this episode. Okay, now it's time to put the final piece of the puzzle onto the board. What are some of Neville's best moments? I did an episode on this, a full episode on this, episode 87, I will put the link in the show notes below, but basically, I just listed off some of Neville's best moments, and I'm going to give you two that I think are just, are are great, and I already said them, and they are, of course, the most popular, but I'm going to put them in creatively, and we're going to kind of discuss how how they fit into his role, into his, his use, and I think really fit, no, make the picture whole. So, his two best moments, like I already said, are when he stood up to Harry in the first book and when he killed Nagini. Of course, you might say these are, are his best moments because, you know, he's he's finally breaking out of his bubble and he's finally becoming himself, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. And that's true. That's, that's all true. That is, of course, what really became of him. And that, that was when Neville, that, that's kind of the beginning and end of Neville's Neville's path. He started with someone who who could set it to his friends, and I mean, very difficult, of course. And then he became someone who could stand up to his enemies as well. So these are his two best moments. I think a lot of people will agree at a, on at least one of these as being just absolutely fantastic. If not the best, then at least up there. So I I think these are actually numbers one and two on that list in episode 87, uh, the best of the long bottom. One was the uh, Neville standing up to his friends, and two was Killing Nagini. And I said number one was standing up to his friends because he, Dumbledore had the best, he said, um, no, anyone can stand up to their enemies, but what's even harder is standing up to your friends. But I think this really shows how Neville had the confidence in him all along. If what he did in the first book was harder than what he did in the seventh book, well, not not literally, but he he had the courage and the strength and the confidence in him to stand up to Harry in the first book, and he then stood up to his enemies in the seventh. But that's so confusing because I thought we just said that standing up to your friends was harder than standing up to your enemies, and it is, it is, it absolutely is, which I think marks 
the the absolute fullness of Neville's character. He's a very round and dynamic character. He he changes throughout the story. So Neville starts as someone who can stand up to his friends and ends as someone who can stand up to his enemies. That just goes to show Neville had the same confidence in him the entire time. If he could do the most difficult thing at the, in the very, very, very first book, he could absolutely do the thing that he did in the seventh book, Kill Nagini, Santa to Voldemort, all of that kind of stuff. So I think this is really where the, the final piece kind of gets fitted in. We really see that Neville had the courage in him the whole time, and he was really trying his best for the entire series, which is the exact kind of effort we want to see from a character like Neville, who who can, seems to have to project no, no confidence. He seems to project someone who cannot do the things that he is asked and cannot complete the tasks he is given. But with these two things, with, with these two awesome moments spread so far apart with some of the um, hardest things you could possibly do stand up to your friends and enemies we see that he had the same fire in him the entire time but he let the fire go in the seventh book which is really where what he needed to do he was holding on to the image of him of his father he was holding on to the image of who he thought he should be in the first book uh the first second third and really bleeding into the fourth and fifth and sixth but i mean like maybe mid fifth when he really when he disarmed harry when he started to see himself really kind of really taking off when he led the da in the seventh book he saw himself as himself not as his father not as who he thinks he should be but as he is and that is where we see Neville's true value. It's when he saw himself as not his father, but he saw himself. And break out of the shell and the bubble he was in for so, so long. And now we are here. The moment you've all been waiting for. Is Neville a useful character in the story? Or is he just another piece of garbage, another another riffraff is cast aside to the road. Well, this episode should have at least shown you a pretty obvious answer. Let's say it together, is Neville useless? On the count of three, one, two, three, no! Neville is not useless. He is something, he is more than something. And we can really, really see that throughout the story. And I, this is the point in the episode where I usually give, you know, the final, the final explanation, the final part of this puzzle. But I don't think I have to, actually. I don't think you know everything. I think you know everything at this point. This entire episode, I think, has been building up to this point. It has been, it has been shown that I do not think Neville is a useless character, and I think everything that I've said previously before this has been to prove that. And I hope that you have seen truly that Neville is not the person that he is he's assumed to be upon first glance. And I think that's really where this stems from. Someone reading the Harry Potter story for the first time. Someone seeing Neville for the very first time and thinking, oh man, pff, look at look at this guy. He's so funny. He's he's so clumsy. I bet he is never going to do anything. And seeing Neville as, you know, kind of just really out of his comfort zone. And for, for the first time, just noticing that Neville is not who he thinks he can be. And then the seasoned Harry Potter veterans like you and me, reading the Harry Potter story again for like the 7th or 8th or ninth or 10th time, seeing that Neville's evolution is so much more than that, knowing what he does at the end, knowing who he becomes, and really noticing how he changes and seeing what he goes through to change the way he does. That is the biggest factor on why we see Neville in such a clumsy light. He is assumed to be the, the, the clown that we see. He is not thought to evolve past what he is in the first, second, third, and fourth books. Just someone who cannot keep it together, who does not know magic, who cannot cast spells. And when it moves on beyond that, it's only in the seventh book when we really get to see how Neville has grown. And by that point, the story's over. By that point, we don't have any more ne of Neville to, to get an impression of. People who have read the, the story for the first time see that, that part of the story think, wow, Neville's great, and then never get another moment with him. So there's not enough time to really imprint the fact that Neville grows far past what he was, far past what he thought he would be in the beginning of the story. He became someone someone that was completely his own, a person that was not 
someone who was made for him and that fact is glazed over upon and that fact is not is not said enough and people who who see the story and don't think like we do really see that they see that he is not you know this 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 brave person and he he cannot stand up to to the death eaters to voldemort he cannot stand up to them but then we see he does and that's really like the wow he did it and then the story's over and there's nothing else to it. So you can see how it's it's difficult to have the impression of Neville that we are trying to create for the fandom as a whole, for the new generation of Harry Potter fans, reading the books for the first time and really understanding who Neville is and really understanding who he is can be and who he turns into at the end of the story. So that is the end of my long rant. It definitely has not felt like the entire half hour of this episode. I felt like I have just been just started recording this. But let it be known that Andrew, you are I want to say you are wrong. I do not agree with your statement that Neville is not useful. And I know you're gonna say, oh, oh, oh no, I, I can't remember that, but I will always remember that in my brain. So thank you everyone for listening to this episode. Thank you, listener. I hope you have a wonderful day. If snow is in your area, I hope you enjoy the snow. If you're in the the tropics, then enjoy the water. Enjoy the, the sun. Take a walk. That's my advice for the day. For the week, take a walk. Walks are great. Um, drink some water. Water is uh, pretty tasty. Um, Yeah. Just, hey, why don't? Actually, pretty exciting news. Finally had a thousand followers over on the Potter Discussion Instagram account at the Potter Discussion uh, about a week ago, and I believe you're about a thousand two hundred at this point. So we have grown really fast, and I'm super, I'm super excited that that's happening. So at the Potter Discussion is your your piece of advice along with take a walk, drink some water, go check out the Potter Discussion Instagram. I'm posting a ton of stuff every day. Uh, mo- most days you're going to get a me, you're going to get a, a cool fact, you're going to get a, a, nice, a nice video. So go ahead and check that out. Actually, by the time you're hearing this, I'm sure I'll have posted um, something, some, something else, something pretty cool. So why don't you go ahead and check that out. There's some great stuff at the Potter Discussion. That is at the Potter Discussion in the over on Instagram. Go check it out. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoy the Instagram account because, of course, you will go check that out. But again, at the Potter Discussion, thank you for listening. Andrew, you were wrong and I approved it. I know. Um, thank you. Thank you all for listening. Have a great day. Drink some water at the Potter Discussion. Take a walk. And remember, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. See ya. This was the Potter Discussion.